Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making Christmas soap number two and introducing Christmas theme number two. So this here, this is candlelight Christmas soap. The pour is designed to look kind of like the glow coming off of a candle and the scent was selected for being something really warm and cozy. This theme is all about warm, cozy, rich, indulgent kind of feelings and visuals. So unlike the frosted cranberry theme, which has a definite ingredient tie-in of cranberry type ingredients, this one is much more of a theme around a feeling. This theme is all about, you know, being snuggled up with your favorite blanket, you know, reading by candlelight, drinking a, you know, steaming hot mug of like eggnog or apple cider or tea. It's much more of a theme of warm, cozy, comforting indulgence than any sort of specific ingredient. So to that end, the fat blend in this soap features some rich creamy shea butter and I just, just turned the super fat up just the weeest bit for an extra rich bar. The color of course is that nice kind of like warm candlelighty glow and the scent for this I chose one called Kentucky Bourbon from Brambleberry because it smells warm and comforting and lovely and indulgent and cozy to me. But you can choose, you know, anything that kind of has that olfactory uh, what's it for you as well. Just make sure you are looking at the IFRA, the International Fragrance Association guidelines for whatever you are working with. And make sure that you are working within the maximum allowable usage rate for a wash off product. I'd say that this is a intermediate soap. The batter comes together really easily and traces quite promptly. It's just that the pouring you know, definitely has more steps than just a, a one go because we are you know, creating several different colors of the batter and then layering them in the mold. Knowing I wanted to do some fancy things with the pour, the batter is on the more fluid side, so it does need to sit in the mold for about four days before you want to slice it. So make sure that you're just planning your soaping that way, making sure that you know, you're not gonna be like <laughs> out of town or something uh, uh, around that day four or five marks so that you can slice them bars. As always, if you are looking for more information on this formulation, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post for it, which is always linked in the description box below my videos. You'll find all the information about the fat blend and how to calculate the fat blend so you know you have your finite amounts of water and sodium hydroxide, links to the fragrances that I used, uh, all the instructions all written out so you know that's a bit easier to refer back to often than trying to find the exact point in the video. Yeah, it's just very helpful to read the full partner blog post as well, linked in the description box below, but let's get soaping. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to my first video where you can actually really see all of me making the thing, which is, uh, at least I think it's my first video where this is possible. Uh, thanks in large part to my having a second camera and then also reorganizing the studio so that I don't, this use, this wall used to be covered in like shelves and cupboards and stuff. And so I've rearranged things so that we have a nice expanse of not super cluttered chaotic wall so we can make videos like this. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, so let's start with a little bit of a tour of my working space and kind of what we've got going on here. Please remember uh, all of the details about how much of everything there is here is in the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below this video, or just go to humblebeeandme.com. Here, fat blend, melted and then allowed to cool to room temperature. Sodium hydroxide solution, mixed up and allowed to cool to room temperature. And I did use ice cubes for part of the sodium hydroxide mixture so that it didn't get quite as hot and then you know cooled faster. Got a couple mixing implements here, our sodium hydroxide spatula just resting in an extra container here, a small spatula which will very likely come in useful, immersion blender, I've got kale and clay to make things extra creamy. Our fragrance, I'm using Brambleberries Kentucky Bourbon for this one. I've got some mica over here, a nice just kind of warm gold candlelighty kind of mica. Uh, this is from Yellow Bee and this was a gift. And then we have our mold. So this is a wooden mold lined with parchment paper. My dad made me this mold, so you can't buy one, but I do have the measurements for one uh, for this one on humblebeeandme.com. So if you would like to make your own, uh, or perhaps barter with a woodworking friend, soap in exchange for soap mold, uh, they are available for you there. So to start with, we are going to add the kaolin clay 
to our fat blend and then we're going to blend the clay into the fat and so we're doing this now because we can't over trace or you know have the mixture trace too quickly if um, if there's no sodium hydroxide in here yet Once the clay is all blended in, we are going to add the sodium hydroxide and then bring the mixture to trace. I'm just going to pour the lye mixture just over the spatula that I used to stir it up just to reduce splashing potential. And then we're going to bring this to quite a light trace because we have somewhat ambitious plans for this batter. This is at quite a thin trace now, so I'm going to add our fragrance. So the plan for pouring and decorating this soap is to go for a bit of a gradient, like a flame. So we are going to pour off a portion of the batter into this cup and make it quite a deep flame color. And then we are slowly going to dilute the very pigmented mixture with the remaining batter so that it fades from a richer golden, you know, kind of yellowy gold into a paler cream color. Now this fragrance does contain some vanillin, so the soap is going to a discolor to a creamy color as time goes on uh, and that works really well for what we're doing here. So I'm holding the spatula quite close to the surface of the soap as I pour. This batter is thin enough that we are definitely going to get some intermixing, which is, you know, what I what I wanted. We should get a pretty uh, pretty good fade effect going on. So our soap is poured. I am going to go move all of this into the kitchen and then we can decorate the top. To decorate the top of the soap, I'm going to do some kind of mica drops and swirls. So I am going to put another scoop of the same mica we used earlier into a little bowl, which you didn't see at all, sorry. There we have mica in a bowl and then I'm going to add just a bit of extra olive oil to it. There's already olive oil in the batter. And give that a whisk and then scatter droplets over the surface of the soap. You can also use a pipette for this, but I always kind of feel like that's kind of a wasteful use of a pipette and if you can avoid it, this works as well. And once I feel like there's enough mica on there, you know, a reasonably good distribution, I'm gonna flip our little whisk over and just kind of drag it through the little blobs of mica, create 
fun little kind of wispy bits like smoke off a candle. And you can also use a toothpick for this, but this is also easy and effective and I was gonna be washing this anyways. We're getting to the point where there's enough viscosity too that you kind of pick up and just like scoot it across. You get some kind of fun, pretty subtle soap textures where the kind of under color starts to come up and it creates just a little wee bit of dimension, which is very pretty. But that, uh, that is it. We have made the soap and now we are going to leave it to saponify. I think this is probably gonna take closer to 48 hours to get hard enough to slice. But yeah, I'm just gonna go pop this on a shelf somewhere. I'm not going to cover it and leave it to do its soapy saponification magic. So I will see you in a couple days. And now I'm going to go do a bunch of dishes. All right, it is time to unmold this soap and see how it turned out. Uh, it ended up, uh, it's been four days since I made this. That, that was not, I did not intend to wait four days, but that is just kind of how the last four days have ended up going. So fingers crossed this isn't really difficult to slice. Oh no, we're fine. Honestly, I think if I tried to slice it much sooner, it might've been too soft. <laughs> I'd say that's promising. I am wiping my knife down with a damp dishcloth in between slices so that uh, we don't start to get kind of a gummy buildup from slice to slice. Well, these are looking really lovely, quite happy with how they turned out. I do want to take a vegetable peeler to the edges of them, kind of bevel them up a bit, but they're still pretty soft. I was definitely noticing little bits of denting happening from my hand as I was slicing these. So yeah, just gonna kind of back it off a bit, line them up and leave them to age for a few days. Uh, just to get a little bit harder and then we shall have some fun <laughs> with a vegetable peeler so that we can have some like neat beveled edges to these bars. So it's been a couple days and our bars of soap are definitely a bit harder so we can grab our vegetable peeler and trim up the edges. is the shaving or beveling done on the bars. So of course now you've got this tangle of soap scraps. Uh, one of the things that I like doing with these, you can just kind of pop them in a bucket or like an old ice cream bucket or something to, uh, to continue to dry out. And then you can um, you know, save scraps like this from several batches of soap. And then I have a project over on humblebeeandme.com for fairy bread soap which is inspired by a Australian snack where you put sprinkles on buttered bread. And uh, yeah, you just like throw soap scraps like this from a bunch of different batches of soap into your food processor until you've got a bunch of just tiny little dots, different colored soap. And then you stir that into a soap batter and then yeah, you get kind of a fun miscellaneous soap and nothing goes to waste. And that's it for Christmas soap number two of 2021, candlelight cold processed soap. Uh, these do still need to age for a few weeks. I'd give it at least three or four weeks before uh, you know, packaging these up and gifting them. Though of course, if you live somewhere very humid, uh, you may want to give it a bit longer so that they can really dry out. So they'll last a nice long time once they are in use. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post for this soap. 
it is linked in the description box below this video. Thank you so very much. Happy Christmas soaping, and I'll see you next time.